How you doing ladies and gentlemen, I am Dave B. I sell Chevys and today we're going to do a real quick, short, to the point video about the differences between Chevrolet's three vehicles that have a third row seat. We have the Traverse, we have the brand new 2021 Tahoe, and we have the brand new 2021 Suburban. So these are all 2021 models and as you look here you can kind of see that obviously on the left the Traverse is the smallest of the bunch. The Tahoe and the Suburban are, uh, you know, are pretty much the same size when you look up front. Now I did specifically line these trucks up pretty uh, pretty exactly here, nose to nose. This way when we look in the back, we can actually see how much longer each one is. And as you can see here, the Traverse is the shortest of the bunch. The Tahoe is a little bit longer. And the Suburban obviously is a little bit longer than the Tahoe. You'll also notice here as we look at the roof line, the Tahoe and Suburban will stand much taller than the Traverse as well. Here's another shot from the windshield. And if we take it down to the hood line, you'll see the Tahoe and Suburban are also much taller at the front end of the vehicle as well. Although the Traverse is the smallest of the bunch, don't let that fool you, there is a tremendous amount of interior space in the Chevy Traverse. And that's mainly because this vehicle is built unibody construction. It's like one big safety cage. Because of that, you have a lot of interior space. I'm six foot five inches tall, so I'm a pretty good judge of, uh, of, of interior dimension size. Right now I'm sitting in the front seat where I'm basically comfortable. Without moving the front seat here, I am now sitting in the back seat. You can see I have a tremendous amount of space. And one of the benefits of this vehicle is you can actually uh, pull a bar under the seat, slide the seat forward to give more room to the third row. And when you do that at six foot five, I can fit in the third row as well. My knees barely scrape the seat. My head barely scrapes the ceiling, but uh, I fit, it's comfortable. Now I know what you're probably thinking, you're probably thinking that there's not a lot of space behind the third row since there's so much room in the seat area, but that would be uh, further from the truth. I mean, check out the amount of space you have here behind the third row seat. You have a nice hidden storage compartment underneath. Um, I actually have clients that will keep this upright, and then you can put your luggage and things like that in this way you have more, uh, a little bit more height for your storage. And then of course you can fold all the seats down. You basically just pull this strap, push forward, pull this strap, push forward, and now you have a nice open cargo area with still seating for four. And if you need more cargo space, you just pull this handle, you can drop these seats down, and now you have a wide open floor. Uh, they do have a bench seat option as well in certain models of the Traverse. This one obviously has the two captain's chairs. Here's one more look at the cargo area with everything folded down. This has a tremendous amount of space, a tremendous amount of versatility because you do have a 60-40 uh, third row seat so you can fold down really what you need depending on you know how many passengers or what kind of cargo you're carrying. Let's just say you're carrying like skis or something like that, you can put them right here on the right hand side and still have two seats in the third row, one in the second row for your passengers. Next we're going to look at the Tahoe and the Suburban and we're going to kind of tackle those together because they are very similar other than the length. So if you look at, which I don't think I mentioned, the Traverse is 204 inches long the Tahoe is 210.7, which is about six inches longer. The Suburban is 225.7, so it's about 15 inches longer than the Tahoe. Um, the only other difference with the Suburban is obviously you have a longer wheelbase. If you look, you'll see your tires are lined up here. When we get to the back, uh, the Suburbans are obviously spread out a little further due to the fact that it's a longer vehicle. So pretty much everything up until like the back of the third row is the same, you know, for the most part. Uh, it's really just the length that you get, uh, you know, extra cargo space behind that third row seat. Just like the Traverse, obviously me in the front seat at six foot five, I have plenty of space. Second row seat in the Tahoe, same thing, plenty of space. And new for 21, you pull your handle here and you can actually slide this seat forward four inches, giving you more space in the third row. Also brand new for 2021 in the Tahoe and Suburban, a brand new multi-link independent suspension system that freed up a tremendous amount of space underneath the vehicle so they can drop the floors a lot lower, giving you a lot better seating position in the third row, a lot more leg room, head room, uh, pretty much plenty of room for someone at my height at six foot five. Now that the old new Tahoe for 2021 is about a little under seven inches longer than the previous generation Tahoe, you actually get a lot of usable space behind the third row. Uh, this was not the case in the 2020. I do have a video of the 2020 model versus the 2021 model Tahoe, which I'll put in the end of this video if you wanna check it out to see the differences between the two. Uh, but there's a tremendous amount more space behind the third row. This one's a Premier, so you have buttons here that you can power fold the third row seats down. Just gonna press that, headrest will drop, seats will fold flat. And then of course, this also has the power folding second row seats where we can drop those down from here. And now you have that nice flat load floor, just like you did in the Traverse. 
big difference between the Tahoe and the Traverse is how big the opening is. Because again, this vehicle is a lot taller like we saw earlier. So you're getting a lot more uh, usable space for larger items inside this vehicle. Lastly, we have the Suburban. Now we already know I can fit in the front seat fine. I can fit in the second row seat fine. We can slide that seat forward and back uh, four inches. That's the same for both the bench and for the second row bucket seats. We know we have plenty of room in the third row. The thing in the Suburban that's really gonna make it shine is how much space you have behind the third row. Check this out. You have over three feet of space from the back of the seat to the back of this vehicle. You do have a small storage compartment underneath. Uh, there is one of these that's similar in the Tahoe as well, which I just realized I never mentioned. Uh, you can fold both seats flat just like we did in the Tahoe before. Power folding, which gives you a tremendous amount more space. And of course, you can fold down the second row seats as well. And when you do that, you'll have you know enough space to fit a piece of plywood in this vehicle. We are well over the eight feet mark from the back of the front row seats to the back of this vehicle. And not just the Suburban, but the Suburban, the Tahoe and the Traverse, all three of them are 48 inches uh, in width, a little over 48 inches. So you had the proper width to put like a piece of eight by four uh, plywood in the vehicle. The Suburban's the only one that's gonna do it as far as the length. The Tahoe, you're gonna be short by maybe like four or five inches and the Traverse a little bit more than that, obviously. But if you had to do it and tie the door down or something like that, um, I'm sure it could be done. Again, the Suburban, you can put it in, close the door, forget about it and uh, unload when you get home. Ladies and gents, I hope this video was helpful. Just kind of giving you a little insight to the space in each vehicle uh, and the size of each vehicle. Definitely go to your local Chevy store and check them out for yourself. Uh, one thing I will say, no matter which one you choose, whether it be a Traverse, a Tahoe, or a Suburban, all three of these vehicles, they drive, they drive very well. They handle very well. They feel very confident. Uh, they're very confident, inspiring going down the road. You know, a lot of things I'll hear in the beginning when someone steps up to a vehicle of this size is that's way too big. And I have other videos that will show you like camera angles and stuff like that, like parking needs and driving these down the highway and maneuvering supermarket parking lots. It's actually very, very easy. Um, you get used to it very quick. So don't let the size of these vehicles, uh, you know, intimidate you in any way. If you're not used to driving something this big, they're very, very uh, confident, inspiring, like I said. Uh, if you have any questions at all, please put them down in the comments. Uh, I'll answer all of them. I'm, I'm Dave B. I sell Chevys. I've been selling Chevys for 16 years here at Schumacher Chevrolet of Livingston, and I'm happy to help out in any way I can. And if you, um, if you want, check out my other videos. I have, uh, I'll put two playlists at the end of this video. One is gonna be dealership life. It's sort of like behind the scenes of what it's like to be a car salesman. I have over like 115 videos in that playlist right now. I also have some videos on uh, the Tahoe that I can put out there as well, comparing the 2020 Tahoe to the 2021. So if you wanna kind of see the differences there and uh, I'll keep pumping these videos out as we get these vehicles in. Right now, Suburban and Tahoe are, uh, are very tough to come by, but um, yeah, as we get them in, I'll keep you updated. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.